What's cracking, everybody? New video. While this is a new video, it's going to have a character in here that uh, those of you that have been on the channel for a little while, you're going to remember the story that I told about uh, an individual that I referred to as um, Dylan, right? And um, Dylan and T and, you know, the a clavo they can't pinched. And, you know, those of you that know, you know. Well, in this video, this is Dylan, right? Dylan was involved in this. So here's what we have. Um, somebody came, right? Somebody came out of the shoe. And um, landed on uh, B Yard New Folsom with us. Uh, it's just maybe the end of 1995, beginning of 1996, somewhere around there, I believe, right? That's not really relevant, but I'm trying to remember exactly, you know. Well, <clears throat> this guy came down, and as he lands and he's meeting people, um, there was somebody there that he knew. He knew him from the streets, and he knew him from the county jail. And uh, you know, I've I've mentioned to you guys before back then. You know, my Sally was, you know, somebody whose voice was uh, very loud on the yard, right? Um, if you know what I mean. And so, because of that, I was always aware of things. You know. Um, this is where I got a lot of good schooling, good education. And um, so I was aware. This is how I know all the intricacies of, of this thing, right? So this guy came down and he was like, you know, um, you know, this bottle's here and, you know, um, shouldn't be here. And my Sally at first didn't tell me who it was, right? Because um, it was very touching. But he told me, he said, hey, look, Holmes. You know, this vato that just got here, he was like three cells down from us. <clears throat> and he said, he brought down, you know, he, he, he made us aware of something that we're going to be taking care of in the next few days. And he goes, I'll let you know who it is. He goes, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you know that it's somebody that's been here as long as us. Because we had both been there, you know, like about a year little over a year maybe and he goes it's somebody that's been here as long as us and nobody knew about it and he goes and it's somebody that when you find out he said it's gonna blow your fucking mind so he goes i want to see if you're able to figure it out how am i gonna figure that out right so i start calculating okay you know i would go to yard and i would be like well that was has been here you know, well, that auto's been here. Well, I remember when this guy got here. But it was always like, it's going to blow my mind. So I was like, hmm. That was the part. Uh, I was thinking, oh, is it somebody that, you know, is heavy on the yard? You know what I mean? As heavy as it could be because the heaviest were in the bay. But, you know, those of you that know, especially in the era, you know what I'm talking about. Couldn't figure it out. Well, the day before the thing's going to go down, my Sally asked me, did you figure it out? I said, no way. There's, there's, you know, I can narrow it down to a few people, you know, and he goes, okay, who are the few people? And this was a private conversation, you know, so I told him, I, you know, this, do this, do this. And, and he was like, it's none of them. And he goes, it's boom. And he told me the name. And I was like, what the fuck? It was the biggest dude on the yard. Huge. A dude from Easy Riders. Turned out this dude, um, when he was on the streets, had um, got caught up in smoking rocks, right? And um, something went down. I guess a murder occurred. Uh, had nothing to do with him or his neighborhood. Completely different neighborhood. And um, this dude, uh, he told. He told the Huda's what happened. Wound up. In the gang module later, right? Alley County, he wound up in the gang module. It was around 1993, I think. 
maybe 94, but I'm, I'm no, I think it was when it first opened, right? And uh, he's right there, and, and this dude, like I said, he's huge. This dude's big, and he's got cold hands. Like, I, I've always been of the belief the, the bigger the dudes are, the more likely they don't know how to fight because they didn't have to fight growing up. It's little dudes that have to fight. Big dudes, you know, they, they, they survive off of their, uh, their look a lot of times. But I seen this dude get in the ring. Those of you know that know, you know. New Folsom had a boxing program, boxing teams. And uh, I saw him get in the ring. I saw him break the trainer's ribs. Like, this dude, he was vicious, right? So, anyways, he was in the gang module. He was functioning, you know. And back then, to get in the gang module, it wasn't like they made it later where, oh, you got tattoos. Oh, yeah, you're going to the gang module. You know, no. Back then, it was you had to put in work. And when you put in work, you made your way there. If you kept putting in work, then you went to, you know, high power, whatever. So he was doing the thing, you know, he was in Wayside, did his thing, boom, boom, boom. And he wound up over there in, in, in the gang module. But the guy he told on wound up on his roll, right? And, uh, you know, this is a six-man cell. And he had five dudes on him. They butchered him. So when they hit him, one of the things that everyone in that cell had told everyone was we took out one of his eyes because they they stabbed him everywhere but one of the stab wounds it, one of the knife it went into his eye and so that was why he was able to skate because they were always looking and he had changed his name but he's humongous but anyways so they're always looking for a dude with this placaso and missing one eye that's how he was able to skate but when this dude landed because he was there he was like, nah, I know this dude, so I'm going to handle it. And they were like, nah, you just came down from the shoe. It's not your business. You know, you, thank you for letting us know, and it's going to be handled. So, like I said, the day before, my cell is like, ah, this is who it is. And um, so, you know, I know what to do from then, you know. So I go out to yard, and I'm posted up, and I'm watching, and I'm with the dude, you know. Um, well, anyways... It, it, ha it just so happened that day. There was actually, it was during the softball season. New Folsom would have um, sports programs back then until somebody hit somebody with a bat, then there'd be no more baseball. Or during football, if something happens in the flag football thing, boom, then there's no more football. But they would always give it a try, right? Well, it just so happened that day it was um, the Raza from Southern California and the, and the Bulldogs were on the same team and they were playing against the Whites, right? And the Wato from Easy Riders was on the team, and so was Dylan. So the whole time I know this is Dylan's move, right? And Dylan had actually um, requested that nobody go with him. And he said, because if somebody comes with me, we're, we're going to go to the hole. He said, if I do it by myself, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to take him down. He will be gone. And I'm going to get away with it. So they told him, all right, that's what you want. You got it. And um, I remember I had positioned myself to where I had my back to the baseball diamond as they were coming off the field. And I was facing directly where uh, Easy Riders was at. And um, Dylan was sitting down. Behind the backstop, there's um, those of you that have been in New Folsom B facility, you know, there's some granite slabs that are kind of like, you know, um, benches to sit on. Well, he was sitting there, and he, I, 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 I know he was plan planning, like, okay, I got to figure out when, it, when, when's the best time. And as he's sitting there, his target, the monster, comes and sits right on Dylan's left hand side and I remember Dylan was sitting down you know I can't really do it because of the position of the camera but he had his elbows on his knees and was leaning forward and when when you know this dude we're just going to call him easy so I don't have to keep saying easy right when easy sat down next to him Dylan like put his head down and you, I could see him he was laughing like what a fucking perfect thing for me 
And uh, so I told the dude that I was with that I, I needed to keep him aware of what was happening because he had his back to where they were. I said, hey, it's about to go down. And he goes, Sergio? And then he goes, where's Dylan? I said, easy, you just went and sat down next to him in the perfect spot for him. And he laughed, right? And, and unfortunately, um, we were laughing about it, you know. Um, that's just the way it was back then. And um, Dylan, like, looked to the side. And what he had, well, I don't want to say where he pulled his weapon out of. But he, I watched him right it was, it was crazy. It was, there was two outs. There was a pop-up. The ball went up high, kind of far, a little bit past second base. Took a while to come down. And then that's when Dylan just jumped on him. Boom, 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 boom. He was all in his neck area, right? And I remember thinking, before it, was, it went down, I remember thinking, I'm probably going to have to run over there because Dylan's about to chop, try to chop a tree down. And it's a big mother. E this easy dude was a big dude, right? And I remember this pegada always stuck with me. When Dylan first moved on him, boom! The first one was hard. Boom! And then after that, it was just pop, 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 pop. He was just poking holes all in his neck. But when that first one hit him, that dude easy, like, came up off that granite and, like, arched his back up and he put his his arms behind him on the granite. And he was, it was weird. It was like, you know, that, that new Exorcist movie where the chick, her back arches up and she's, like, that's what he did. But he made a sound that was, like, weird. I've ne I never heard that sound before or after. But he made this sound. And then his body just crumpled. Boom. And he had his sunglasses on. And I remember they were, he, he collapsed. And, and he, his sunglasses were kind of like this. And he was just. And um, like I said, the ball came down. Everybody on the field started coming in. Everybody that was around right there slowly got up, stepped over if they had to, and walked onto the field. And um, I remember one of the Rasa that didn't know, he looked over, and by then, the whites had came in, the Rasa was going out. And one of the Rasa that didn't see, he was a youngster, my age probably, I was young, I was probably 20, probably about 20 at the time. He didn't see what happened, he just looked back. And he saw all the whites around. They were trying to avoid where he was. But anyways, Easy was laid out, leaking. And right away, I take that back. It was a vato from Fresno. He was going to rush the nearest white dude. He was like, hey. And it was uh, one of the raza from Southern California. He was from Hawaiian Gardens. And he goes, hey, that ain't what it is. You know what I mean? Get out here on the field. And he's like, no. Nah, and he was like, hey. Come out to the field, eh? And one of the things that I was already aware of when Easy got hit in the county, the reason why he survived is because he played possum. He played dead, and the Vatos thought they killed him. The Huras came running in, and, you know, they were still on him, and they thought he was dead because of the way he, he was getting hit and just wouldn't move. So they were like, he's done. He did the same thing in New Folsom. When Dylan thrilled him, he did that weird noise, arched up and then collapsed. Dylan walked off and everybody, you know, went, you know, maneuvered where they had to. But when he realized, because New Folsom back then, them cops didn't want to do no paperwork. You know what I mean? Like, you, they'd rather have you bleed out and let somebody else see it and have to do all the paperwork. So he realized, like, holy shit. He must have realized, I'm about to fucking die right here if I don't get up. And I remember he, we started walking on the track, but keeping an eye on what is he doing, where is he at? And he sat up, and I remember he grabbed his left leg, and he lifted it up, and it dropped. He let it drop, and he did it again. And I looked, and I go, what the fuck is he doing? And the vato that I was walking with goes, 
his legs paralyzed. He was trying to get feeling in that leg, and that's why he kept picking it up and dropping it. He stood up, and he started hopping on one leg towards the backstop. And there was a young white dude about to, um, he was, you know, in the batter's box. And he told the white dude, hey, let me get that bat. And he's leaking, right? And the white kid didn't know any better. He was young too. And he turned around to try to give it to him. An OG white dude took the bat from the youngster and said, hey, I'm up next. And he told Easy, you ain't getting this bat, Holmes. Figure it out. And Easy looked towards the central tower. I remember he took like two hops on his right leg and then fell face first on home plate. And you know what the cold thing is? And I'm sorry, I'm going to laugh. When he landed on first on our home plate, somebody yelled, he's safe. <laughs> hey, again, in prison, you have to find humor sometimes in places that uh, others may not. But when he did that, he forced the cops hands and they hit the alarm and they took him off and um. Again, this was, the, this was probably, it's the biggest Mexican dude I ever did time with in my life. One of the biggest people I ever saw in prison. And a little bitty dude with a nice piece of steel completely broke him down. I don't tell these stories, you guys already know. I don't tell these stories to glorify none of that life. I tell these stories in order to make those of you in the criminal world that have not yet caught a L, have not yet got stretched out in prison. I'm trying to just show you guys where, hey, you don't want to live like that. You know? And just imagine that dude had did what he did on the streets. Whether it was because of the rocks or whatever doesn't make it any, there's, there's no, oh, it's all good, homes. We just know you have been smoking. Nah. Imagine all the things he saw, because like I said, he was putting in work. He was very known. Um, he had gone to Susanville, you know, when the thing with uh, Raza from Southern California and Northern California, he, he had uh, built up a little reputation of things that he had done up there. But his past caught up to him in a major way. So I'll... With that, I'll go ahead and bring this long video to a close. Uh, I do want to say that uh, those of you that have been watching the videos lately, I really appreciate you. Uh, for whatever reason, right now, YouTube is not sending out uh, notifications. Um, if you're a subscriber or a channel member, do me a favor and make sure you, uh, you hit the notification bell and hit all. Because when I look at my analytics, trying to figure out what's going on, uh, while I have nearly 30,000 subscribers, only 5,000 people have hit the notifications and 3,600 of those have hit all notifications. So um, those of you that are getting notifications, thank you. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment if you have the time. Share the video with whoever you think needs to see it, all right? So with that, stay safe, stay smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.